The global battery industry, guys, the global energy industry, they are saying this is a watershed moment. This signals the point in which there is no return for coal. Fossil fuels are being destroyed. I mean, absolutely obliterated. Because the rest of the world is seeing this. They're saying, hang on a minute, why exactly are we building coal power stations? Why exactly are we not getting rid of old coal power stations when we have an alternative? The prices are so ridiculous, they've hit record lows. Disruption is happening, and it's happening faster than I think most people actually are aware of. This is why here are the numbers. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. If you'd like to become a YouTube member of the channel, I'll put a link in the description below. And you get access to some videos that are on, on the main channel. RenewEconomy.com.au has just reported that the price for big battery storage modules has hit a record low in the latest giant auction in China, where more than 70 bidders competed for 25 gigawatt hours of capacity in what's being described as a watershed moment for the industry. Battery storage is already the most compelling energy storage technology for grids scrambling to boost their dispatchable power capacities as they add more wind and solar. And remember, wind and solar is not being stored in the way that it should. A lot of it's been wasted. So adding a battery, it's like almost capturing free energy. Aging coal and gas plants are less capable of filling the gap and it's being filled with batteries. The technology per new economy has delivered enormous price reductions in recent years, undermining the case for gas-fired generation and coal, where prices have jumped and delivery times for new projects have blown out because of supply chain shortages. The latest auction in China offered 25 gigawatt hours of capacity for lithium-ion phosphate batteries over a range of storage periods, one hour, two hours, and four hours. The results um, are fascinating and they stunned the world. And I'm not underestimating this. They truly did. People are shocked by the prices. The knockout price was a bid of $51 per kilowatt hour for a four hour battery. Uh, the average was, which energy storage says means battery prices have fallen by 30% since 2024. Uh, guys, this is 15% fall from record lows of a couple of months ago. So the price of batteries has come down by around 30% in the last year. It continues to fall drastically. But the batteries in this, at the same time within the last 12 months have also gotten better. They're guaranteed now to last for longer. A lot of these companies are giving out 25-year warranties on these batteries. Bidders included CATL, Cadel, BYD, so the two biggest battery companies in the world, Envision and SunGrow, as well as major new players including the world's largest lithium refiner, Ganfeng Lithium. The bid is being viewed as a watershed moment, says ESS. The 25 gigawatt hour tender is seen as a turning point for the Chinese storage sector's shift from policy-driven growth to a more sustainable market-oriented model. With system costs declining rapidly, LFP batteries are gaining traction across global grids with generation and the truth is, it's not just for energy storage for commercial level, right? For major grid storage. It's also for homeowners. The price of home batteries is what's continuing to fall. Marek Kubik, co-founder of US-based battery storage supplier Fluence, and now director at the Saudi-based Halo project Neom, he described the auction results as a milestone noting that the prices reflected a full energy storage system, not just cell prices. They do not, however, include construct civil construction costs, which are you know based on that local site. Here's the thing though, a full energy storage system. This is not the cells. If this was just at cell level, you're looking at closer to a $35 per kilowatt hour price. $35, we have never seen this in history, and this is a a staggering. This is not even sodium batteries, this is the LFP. Sodium batteries should be able to bring the price down even further. And it's gonna, this, is gonna, this signifies a rapid movement away from fossil fuels. There's no point burning fossil fuels when the alternative is so much cheaper. These rapid and sustained battery storage price falls will continue to have big implications for other technologies aiming to compete with lithium-ion's crown, Cubic wrote on 
LinkedIn. They will also pull forward the economic tipping points for longer duration 8-hour to 10-hour systems needed to shore up round-the-clock renewables use cases which disproportionately stand to benefit. That assessment follows new analysts that suggest the plunging cost of solar PV and battery storage has opened up a new frontier in the transition to green energy, with cities and industries around the world now able to access low-cost 24-hour solar generation, which is what experts have been saying for years, and experts who are smart anyway, like Tony Sebo and others, uh, they've been saying for years this was the future, and it's here now. According to the UK-based energy think tank Ember, the combined cost of solar and battery storage has fallen 22% in the past 12 months alone. This is a turning point in the clean energy transition, says lead analyst Costanza Rangelova. Around the clock solar is no longer just a technical possibility and distant dream, but it's an economic possibility. Remember, 90% of the world's population lives on the Sun Belt. They will benefit from solar. Yes, some of the world doesn't live on the Sun Belt, but that's only 10%. The cost advantage of battery storage was underlined this week by Federal Energy Minister Chris Bowen. Chris Bowen, when asked if the federal government was thinking of allowing gas to compete with battery storage in its series of auctions under the capacity investment scheme. Basically, the journalists asked the government, you know what, guys, you're going to let gas projects compete with renewables. Here's what they said. Do you know how many auctions gas has won against renewables? It's a round number. Zero, said Bowen. So he goes on. Gas can't compete because the economics are so different. So no. We won't be introducing gas into the capacity investment scheme. I've made that clear from the beginning. And Bowman's not even talking about his own ethics or you know supporting renewables. He's just saying, from a financial perspective, you have to be an absolute retard. You have to be an absolute moron to even consider gas. Why are you even asking the question, journalists, you idiots? Do you know how many gas... I'm going to repeat it again. Do you know how many auctions gas has won against renewables? It's zero. It's just not going to win. It's not going to be the cheapest form of energy. Not by a mile. So why even focus on it, right? Why even consider it? It's a waste of time. The competing economics of gas-fired generation have been underlined by the sheer scale of battery storage projects being delivered into Australia's grid and America's grid and all grids all around the world, particularly though China's grid, and their rapid construction and delivery. That's the thing. You want to deploy a big battery, it takes a few months, right? You want to build a nuclear power station, it takes you 15 years. Major gas generation projects such as Snowy Hydro's Hunter Valley project have suffered enormous cost blowouts and delays. One of Australia's biggest energy companies, Alinta, last week announced that it is going ahead with the first stage of a massive battery project, one of the biggest in the world, sized at 500 megawatts and 2,000 megawatt hours in South Australia because of the falling costs of battery storage. It will sit next to a proposed gas-fired peaking plant that Alinta has not yet committed to, and I'm guessing probably won't. The plant was first proposed 10 years ago, and at the time it won development approval. But the company who got approval for it, um, they now believe the economics don't stack up. Now, that's despite the site reaching 75% annual share of wind and solar and heading to 100% net renewables by 2027. I should say the state. So, yeah, basically, this power company, right, it gets approval to build this big gas-fired peaker plant. You can make massive amounts. You can make literally hundreds of millions from peaker plants. They're so profitable. But gas ones are not anymore. Batteries are a much better option. So, essentially, the company, under no pressure from the government, has gone and said, yeah, we'll build the big battery, but we're not going to be building that gas-fired peaker plant anymore. You can shelve that plant. It doesn't make sense. Cubic says that intense competition means that margins are razor thin at this point. But keep in mind, Cadle and BYD, I mean, analysts keep saying this. Cubic, I've got to call you up on this, mate, because analysts keep saying, oh, battery prices are so low. BYD and Cadle, they must be making nothing. And then Cadle reveal their, their, their third quarter results, their fourth quarter results, you know, their yearly results. And over and over, you think to yourself, raisins must be, uh, margins must be razor thin because analysts keep saying it. And battery prices keep coming down and then they're still making billions of dollars. I'm like, okay, the truth is that actually the cost to produce these batteries continues to fall because these companies 
are making so many more batteries every year. All right? When you double when you double production numbers, the cost generally comes down by about twenty percent for every doubling. So what this means is that the, there has been a step change in scale-driven cost breakthroughs and rapid innovation in battery design. That is what is the key driver behind these cost reductions. The falling cost of battery storage has made it very difficult, says RenewalEconomy.com.au, for competing technologies such as pump hydro to compete in various auctions. And the truth is, this is the case around many, many countries around the world. This is causing issues, though, for policymakers and market operators who judge that some form of longer duration storage capacity, either in the form of pumped hydro, gas, or some other technology such as solar thermal or compressed air, is required to support the rapid rollout of renewables. In fact, here's part of the problem. Governments around the world, they're not really adapting to this new reality. They don't really recognize the fact that the, ind any, the energy industry has enormously changed. The costs have changed. And in some cases, they're still continuing with ridiculous nuclear power plants, for example, that when they don't economically stack up anymore. They might have agreed to it 10 years ago, five years ago, but it no longer makes any sense. And the reason is because of the declining cost in solar and batteries and the improving, every year improving efficiency of those same technologies. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments. Bye-bye.